Well, hello everyone, Dr. David Perlmutter here, and I wanted to talk with you today about something called the glymphatic system. We've been hearing quite a bit about it, and it was only recently discovered that the brain has another type of circulatory system, if you will. It's called the glymphatic system. And the interest in the glymphatic system has really been because it is a, as mentioned, newly discovered pathway by which the brain is able to rid itself of many of the byproducts of metabolism. It's basically how the brain, if you will, takes the garbage out. And what we've learned uh, more recently about the glymphatic system is it does other things as well. It's also a system that transports within the brain things like glucose and fatty acids and other chemicals that the brain is then able to use uh, to aid in its, its functionality and in its metabolism. So there's been a lot written lately uh, in terms of what we can do to enhance the function of the glymphatic system. Obviously, that would be a good thing. And I think uh, some of the uh, information that we look at is from animal research. And in fact, there's actually very little from human research. One uh, bit of interesting information from the human uh, studies uh, indicates that the quality of our sleep is really quite fundamental in terms of the activity of our glymphatic system. We really want this system to work quite well. Uh, it is even involved in clearing the brain from something called beta amyloid, the accumulation of which has been correlated to things like Alzheimer's disease. So that said, the quality of our sleep again becomes very important. Certainly the quantity of good restorative sleep is obviously therefore very important. Now there's been a lot of discussion as of late with reference to the position that we should be in with reference to sleep. And truthfully, there's not much human data as it relates to the positioning. But what we do know is that laboratory research on rodents uh, using radioactive tracers has clearly demonstrated that as opposed to sleeping supine or prone, meaning on the back or on the belly, that at least in terms of the rodent, when they are constrained and have to sleep on their side, that seems to amplify the functionality of the glymphatic system as well. And another uh, interesting bit of animal research has looked at alcohol as it relates to the glymphatic system. And what it's demonstrated is that no alcohol uh, is worse than some alcohol, uh, which is better than more alcohol. And what I mean by that is a, a, a low level of alcohol seems to be better than having no alcohol on one hand and a lot of alcohol on the other hand. So the sweet spot, we've talked about this before, the U-shaped curve. Now I can't tell you exactly how that translates into dosages that would then be appropriate for humans to take advantage of alcohol's influence on uh, empowering the glymphatic system uh, for a number of reasons. We, there's no one-to-one -one correlation. And to be fair, we don't know that this necessarily indicates that alcohol is good in humans for the glymphatic system. But I think as we move forward, uh, we're looking at lower and lower levels of alcohol in terms of being the recommendation in terms of what's good for your brain. Hope this is helpful for you. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. Bye for now.